Hey, welcome. In this video, we're going to explore some of the features that you can do with the debugger. Now, the debugger is a tool built into Visual Studio that will allow you to trace through your program and find out what the values are of your variables during the runtime. And so you can check to see if the input functions are acting like you programmed them to. And if they are not, you might be able to trace through to find out where the problem lies. And so the debugger is a super important, helpful tool for figuring out how you wrote your software wrong and how you can fix it. And so we're going to look at the debugger right here in just a minute. Hey, let's get started with our program to see some specific things that we can do with a debugger. Now, I'm bringing up an example program that we've already worked on in the past. So this was a activity, I think it was called activity three that we did, where we created a login. So I think Penny and her password was password one was correct. And then I click the button and I get a login success. Now I'm going to focus here on this controller. So this controller has a lot of action going on. There's data passing through it. Let's go ahead and go to line 22, and I'm going to click in the gray column on the left, which will set a breakpoint. You can see that the breakpoint has been indicated in the code by a kind of a maroon color. So when I launch the program, it will automatically stop here, and I should be able to check the values. Let's go ahead and try it. So I'm back in the program again. Let's go ahead and try Penny. So we'll put Penny and her password, and let's check to see what happens. We go ahead and create. Now the program stopped and it uh, came to line 22 and turned the code yellow, which means we're active. You can see the little stop button up here. So the program is active, but we are able to peek inside of the program now and see the value of the variables. Down here in the bottom screen, you can see a variable called user. Let's expand it. And sure enough, you see password and penny are values in there. If I come up here and hover over the model state, you can see that there is some values that are visible here. And you can see the items are now uh, also giving uh, values here. Let's go up another line. Look at line 19. If I hover over the word user, you should be able to see values that come from user. And sure enough, password and penny are there. So there are multiple places if you want to see where these are. And now if I just click continue, the program should keep going and it should say now login success. Let's say I want to set two breakpoints. I could do that just as easily. Let's go to line 31, and I'm going to add a second breakpoint. Now what happens? Okay, I'm going to log in with Penny and her password again. And sure enough, the program stopped again. So you can see that I have the user model just like I had before. Now when I click continue, the program will continue on, and it'll stop again at line 31. And so now I can see if success is true or false. And it looks to me like it is true in this case. So since success is true, we should expect to see the success login page shown. Let's see what happens. I'm going to now step through one at a time with these buttons up here. You can see that I have a show next statement. I have step into, step over, and step out. Let's go through each of these and see how they work. First of all, let's do step into. So if I click here, the execution now jumps to the next line. So I click it again, or I could press the F11 key, and now I have executed this line. So we are slowly stepping through the program. Now I can see the values of the program as I step through it. So we can see that password and penny are down here. Let's go ahead and step through one more. I'm gonna step in. And uh, now you can see that the program has terminated uh, this uh, block. Let's see what's on the screen. So no, nothing's been shown yet. Let's keep going here. Let's go ahead and step into. And now we are now into the next item, which is showing a view. Let's go ahead and continue with step into. And you can see now we are on the login success page. And so slowly, line by line, we are executing the code as I click this. I'm going to now click this button that says step out and it should take me out of this code and should bring me back to the web page. So sure enough, login success is here. So that is stepping through code. Now this becomes extremely useful when you get unpredictable results in your program. For instance, 
if I came to success and it didn't ever come back as true or false, but it came back as null, if it came back as undefined, then I would know that I have a problem with the line that is using the security service. And I would go into security service to investigate what's going on there. So the debugger lets you kind of look inside the code and find out where your problems are. Now let's check out some other options. First of all, I'm going to take away one of these uh, stops and I'm going to focus here on line 31. What happens if I want to check this only and stop it only if there is a successful login? So let's now focus in on what's called conditional breakpoints. So this will stop only if certain conditions are met. Let's go to the success line here in 31. And notice I don't have the other one. I'm going to right click on the breakpoint and choose conditions. Now in conditions, you can see that it says, give me a conditional expression and you can do is true. Now you can write any Boolean expression, for example, x equals equals five. Well, we don't have an x, so let's go ahead and use the variable called success. So if I want to stop here, I can do an equals equals, and I will only stop if this is, I don't know, true or false. Which one do we want to check? Let's say if it's uh, true. So if we have a successful login, we will stop here. And let's close this. Now, if we have a failed login, it should produce the failed screen and not stop. Let's go ahead and test. So we're back to login. I'm going to put Penny in. And let's put in a failed password. So I'll just put in some junk and click Create. And we go straight to the login failed screen. So the condition says, hey, if it's true, we'll stop. If it's not true, we'll keep going. It kept going. Let's back up and now let's put in the correct password and see what that does. So I'll put in password one and choose create. This time the condition says, hey, we got success equals to true and we stopped. So now why would you want to have conditional passwords or anything like this with conditional breakpoints? It's because sometimes your program crashes in a certain place whenever you use a certain value. And so this is a great way to not have to have too many stopping points. You can uh, streamline your debugging process. Let's go to the line that says line 28. And the reason why I'm picking this is because we are calling upon a security service, which is a function that we created. And the security service is found over here if you want to take a look at it. It's the guy that says, hey, let's go to the security DAO service, which is also over here. And then we're going to go run these SQL statements and check to see if the user's in the database. So we're burying our work kind of like two levels deep. And so that's where the step into is going to come into play. So let's come back to the login controller, set a simple breakpoint and run. All right, I get to the login screen. Let's go with Penny again. We'll do a correct password and click create. We have stopped now at our breakpoint. So let's check to see what's here. So, so far, if I hover over user, we should see that there is a password and penny. And now let's go see what's in the security service. It is set to null. Okay, so it hasn't been called yet. Even though we put the breakpoint on this line, it is just before the line executed. So we have two choices for moving along. We could do step over or step into. Well, let's take a look at the difference between these two. So if I click step over, it should step over to the next line, line 29. If I choose step into, it will open up the security service and show us the first line in there. So let's try the step over first of all, which is going to be easier. So we'll click here and now the yellow line shows that we have moved down. So it went into the security service, executed a whole bunch of code, came back and stopped on line 29. So I'm going to stop the program and rerun it. All right, so we're back to the login screen. Let's go with Penny again and her password. All right, now we are back. We have stopped the program on the security service. This time, instead of doing step over, let's do step into and let's see what this does. So step into will bring us into the security service. So go ahead and click into again. And you can see now that the security service is open. So the line of execution is right here. Let's go ahead and step into, and we are on the yellow line here for line 14. This is, if I step into it again, we will go another level deep and it will open up the security DAO, which now brings us into the class here where it has all of the SQL statements. So if I keep stepping into, 
it will bring us to the next line of each of these uh, programs. So as you click through here, you can see I'm trapped deep inside this program. How do I get out? I don't want to see all of the details of how the security service works. I'm not testing that right now. So if I want to leave, I can just use the step out and it should bring me back into the next level higher. I click step out again and it brings me back to the login controller. So step into will take you into a function. Step over will execute the function and just keep running. So do we have a success? It is set to false. How is it false? I thought I put in the correct password. Let's go ahead and check here. Uh, it did say truth. Okay, so uh, once I executed this, uh, this line here, 29, the success changed from false to true. Okay, so it looks like I entered a correct password and we're ready to continue. Okay, it's time for another feature. Let's say I'm interested in seeing this user every time that I go through the line here. At the very end of the value here, there's a thumbtack. Let's click that. And you can see now that the thumbtack has created a little posting here and so that it'll stay there. I don't have to keep hovering over the word user. So I can click the X to make it go away, but if I just keep on continuing through, you can see that the value of user is still up there on the screen. So anytime you want to put a item up for permanent viewing, you can just click the tack and it'll, uh, it'll stay there. Next, I'm going to show you some actions that you can associate with your stopping points. So let's remove this red stopping point and put a new one in. So let's see, delete the point and let's go into the line after success, line 33 and put a new point. Now we know if we reach line 33, we have a successful login. So I don't necessarily even have to stop the program to make use of the debugger. I can send out messages. So let's right click on this thing and choose actions. And now it says, what do you want to do? Do you want an action? Yes, I do. And I'm going to send a message. And I can just simply say here, login was successful and choose close. Now let's go ahead and run it again. So I'm going to type in Penny and her password. And as you see that the execution occurs, login was successful. So it didn't stop. What did it do? Let's switch back into the program and go look at the output window. So you can see that there was a message that was logged here. It says login was successful. And so that came from the debugger, even though the debugger didn't stop. It just continued on. And so this would be useful if you wanted to print the value of items in a loop, for example. If you wanted to see how a process was continuing on with thousands of steps, instead of stopping and going through each line by line and looking them up, just go ahead and log them, and then you can see the patterns that are emerging there. So that's a great way to find out what's going wrong with your program or to understand it better if it's written correctly. And so those are some tips that you have for our debugger. So I've shown you several things about the debugger. First of all, we set breakpoints in the column. Once we have a breakpoint set, we can look up the value of variables as they are being executed. Then you can go through the lines of code one by one with step over or step into. And finally, you can do conditional things where you can only do the debugging if a certain value is true or false or greater than or less than, or you can also just log things out. And so you don't necessarily stop the program, but you can send messages to the output log. And so using the debugger will make you a much more efficient programmer. You'll figure things out faster, not only because your code is sensible, but you'll find the errors instead of just guessing at what's coming out on the screen. So I hope that the debugger becomes a useful tool as you write software and improve its performance.